I don't have it in the video. All right. So today we're going to talk about the discovery of the periodic table, how the periodic table is arranged. And some of what you got out of the Pogel packet you will see fits in very nicely with what we're going to be talking about in this unit. Everything is packaged together in your learning goal, which is on the board, and you've already read. And again, we already talked about the first attempt at classifying the different elements, and we mentioned the triads. We're not going to go back over that, but again, the first blank strontium and the third blank triad. And a triad is a group of three elements that has similar properties. So from there, John Newlands took it a step farther, and again, he didn't know anything about atomic number or electron configuration, similar to Dobenreiner, but he took those first 16, first 16 elements and he listed them according to increasing atomic mass. So he would arrange the elements according to increasing atomic mass. And what he noticed is that there was repetition. With the eighth element of the set, he noticed that those elements had similar physical and chemical properties. Physical in terms of appearance, were they both metals? Chemical in regard to how they reacted. So he noticed some similarities, and this is referred to as the law of octaves. So again, a chemical property is going to talk about how it combines with another element or how it reacts with another substance. So for example, lithium and sodium both reacted with oxygen in a two to one mole ratio. And if you were to look at your periodic table, you would find that lithium and sodium are in what column of the periodic table? What do you think? Lithium and sodium are in what column? The first. So they both reacted with oxygen in a two to one ratio. Keeping along with that trend, beryllium and magnesium would react with oxygen or combine with oxygen in a one to one mole ratio. And if you consider the dynamic periodic table shown here, Beryllium and magnesium are in what column of the periodic table? The second. So when elements were put underneath one another, they had similar chemical properties. They also had similar physical properties, and we talked about properties, both chemical and physical, in an earlier chapter. When aluminum combined with oxygen, it did so in a 2 to 3 ratio. And we'll talk about where those numbers come from in the next chapter when you learn how to write chemical formulas. Instead of writing the name aluminum oxide, this is a chemical formula, and you'll learn how to do that. Now, if it were in the same column, it had similar properties. Lithium and sodium are both metals. Beryllium and magnesium are both metals. They're solids, etc. So very similar in their chemical and physical properties. So this is the arrangement of the first 16 elements. He noticed that lithium and sodium had similar properties, beryllium and magnesium, boron and aluminum, etc. So we started with the triad and we moved to the law of octaves and we're just trying to form some type of classification system. Next came Mendeleev, and he is credited with the first periodic table. A Russian chemist in 1869 generated the first orderly arrangement of the 63 elements that had been discovered. He wrote the element's chemical symbol on an index card, and on the back of the card he wrote down the properties of those elements, both chemical and physical, as well as their atomic mass. And then he arranged them. He listed the elements according to increasing atomic mass, 
And if the elements had similar chemical and physical properties, he would put them in the same column. And he referred to these in Russian, and I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm guessing it's groups. So if you're in the same column, you're in the same group. And you'll see that a column is a group or family because elements that are in the same column have very similar chemical and physical properties. That was the most important characteristic. And sometimes he had to change increasing atomic mass so that this group aspect was maintained. And interestingly, if you look at the periodic table, we know today it's arranged according to increasing atomic number. But the earliest attempts at classification were based on increasing atomic mass because they didn't know about atomic number yet. That was in the 1900s. So generally, if you consider germanium and arsenic, you see an increase in atomic mass to selenium to bromine. But there are a few places on the periodic table where you see a decrease in atomic mass. One of them is right here. So antimony, which in, interestingly is the chief component in gunshot residue, that's what they're swabbing for, is the presence of this element. This has a mass number of 121. Tellurium has an atomic mass of 127.6 or a mass number of 128. Iodine is slightly lower. Initially, he had iodine here and tellurium here, but iodine's properties are so much more similar to bromine, chlorine, and fluorine that he flip-flopped these. Other decreases you see, argon has a mass number of 40, and... Um, Potassium has a mass number of 19, so that's another slight dip. There are a few others as well, uh, plutonium 244, and, and mercurium is 243. So there are some slight dips, because the most important feature was that elements with similar chemical and physical properties were in the same column or group, also known as a family. There are gaps in the periodic table initially because these elements had yet to be discovered. But based on where they fell, he could very closely predict the properties of these elements and his predictions were very close to what they did discover. Germanium was one of the ones they hadn't <coughs> discovered yet, and when they did and looked at the properties that he predicted, he was really close. So Mendeleev came up with the first periodic table. Now, a little later on, Mosley showed that with those spectra that we looked at in terms of the line emission spectrum, the wavelength decreased as the atomic mass increased, and he felt that the spectral lines were not based on atomic mass, but rather atomic number. And that you don't need to really get into, but what you do need to know is that Mosley changed the concept of increasing atomic mass to be increasing atomic number, which is how the periodic table is arranged today. And I've got a short video on Mendeleev's findings, and we'll take a look at that here. I'm going to keep the volume kind of low because the system cracks a little bit and then it sounds bad. Since the early days of science, researchers have been looking for patterns among the elements. By the 1860s, a huge amount of observational data was available. In 1872, Dmitry Mendeleev published the periodic table which made him famous. Not only was Mendeleev
explain the layer of organization of the elements and monocytes, but it enables him to predict the properties of elements that haven't even been discovered yet. In Mendeleev's table, the elements were listed in order of increasing atomic mass. But he studied a new role when similar chemical behaviors were repeated periodically. That's why it's called the periodic table. But we should be able to compare our group to Mendeleev's. Good idea. Our group will show counting and magnesium in Mendeleev. Oh, yeah. Mendeleev is one of the group, too. And we have potassium and sodium. Okay. They're in the group as well. What about the non-metals? Well, we have iodine and chlorine. Mm. Here. And we have neon and argon. I can't find them. They aren't here. Really? Why not? Remember, we're using a periodic table that was made in 1872. Neon and argon weren't discovered until 20 years later. But what exactly do astronomers look for, or scientists look for? All right, and so from the video, you can see that by organizing elements that had similar chemical and physical properties periodically, you can see this repetition, hence periodic table. So you see that the properties repeat periodically, hence the name. So what we've got thus far is the discovery of the periodic table. We started with the triads. We went into the law of octaves, and then finally to Mendeleev's first periodic table. And in regard to the names that you need to know, you do need to know Mendeleev, the Russian chemist who discovered the first periodic table based on the 63 elements that he arranged according to increasing atomic mass. And again, if you were in the same group, same column, you have similar chemical and physical properties. Mosley, a little later on, decided that it was better to have a periodic table showing increasing atomic number, but again, he preserved the concept of the group. Question. So if I asked you who had the first periodic table, you would tell me? Mendeleev. If I asked you how his periodic table was <coughs> arranged according to increasing atomic mass. Good, okay? All right, so let's look at the first modern day periodic table. This is based on the IUPAC system, which stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So whenever they have a new element, it has to go up on this board, if you will. I don't mean like a board like this, like a board of directors. And they will decide whether the name is okay, whether it's past inspection, etc. And they've discovered some new elements lately. Um, the periodic table that we use today is based on periodic law. And again, that says that these properties are going to repeat periodically when the elements are arranged by increasing atomic number. You have periodicity. You know what to expect if the element's in the same group. The same way you have periodicity in your life. During the week, the alarm goes off at 6. You get out of bed, whatever you do, you take a shower. You do the same thing every day during the week to get ready for school. So periodic law is what determines the periodic table today. And again, the one place kids sometimes have issues is you have to remember that modern day periodic table is based on increasing atomic number. The older periodic tables were based on increasing atomic mass. So in regard to the periodic table, the rows are known as periods. And using the Pogel worksheets the other day, you know that there are seven rows or periods on the periodic table. What you also would have seen, for example, is if you are in the second period, let's take lithium, 
And underneath number 13 there, that's the group number, you can see the electron config. So lithium is 1s2, 2s1. Beryllium is 1s2, 2s2. Boron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Carbon ends in 2p2. Nitrogen, 2p3. Oxygen, 2p4. Fluorine, 2p5. Neon, 2p6. So what can you say about elements that are in the same period or row? Their highest N is the same. And it corresponds with what? The row. The row, exactly. So good. Neon ends in 2P6. Boron ended in 2P1, beryllium ended in 2S2, so its highest value of N is the row that it's in, okay? So that's an important observation to make. And columns are known, as Mendeleev established, as groups or families. And we know that there are 18 groups on the periodic table, and if you're in the same group, you have similar chemical and physical properties. For example, group two, helium, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium. And as we slide down here, I really want you to look closely. See it says two, two? I want you to focus on the bottom number, two. Let's look at magnesium, its bottom number, two. Calcium, its bottom number, two. What does that two represent? In this case, it does represent the group, yes, but it works for group one and group two. The amount of electrons in the last orbital. The amount of electrons in the last orbital, yes, it will. And for groups one and two, it's going to represent the number of electrons in the outermost <coughs> shell as well. In middle school, did you learn about valence electrons. What's a valence electron? Right, valence electrons are electrons in the outermost shell, the outermost electrons, and that determines how the substance is going to react. If you look at boron here, it ends in 2p1, but see that last number is three? And aluminum, that last number is three. And gallium, that last number is three. If you're in group 13, you have three valence electrons. So what you're gonna see is that group one has one, group two has two, group 13 has three. And this is where I said be careful with the column number because it works for groups one and two that way but the newer nomenclature, and you can see here that there are 18 groups. Um, the three here is the number of valence electrons, and once you, after you get out of groups one and two, that doesn't work so well. So you have to be careful there, and I'll point those tricks out when we get there so as not to give you too much information. So the valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell, that's S and P only, not D or F. And you'll see that elements have very similar properties. I'll focus on group one here, but then we're going to get into a lot more of it. So with group one, all For group one, all of these substances are solids, 
except hydrogen, which is, of course, a gas. In group one, they're all excellent conductors of electricity. Metals conduct electricity very, very well. You'll see that they combine with chlorine in a one-to-one -one mole ratio. For example, sodium chloride or lithium chloride, always one of the metal piece and one of the chloride piece. And you'll see, and from the Pogel activity as well, that they all end in NS1, and we'll point that out as we walk through the electron configuration. I just want to introduce you to metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, and then we'll be looking very closely at the different groups next time, and we'll be working up that Pogel activity as well. So let's take a look. It turns out on the periodic table that most elements are metals. I don't see the little one with the spirit. Here it is. So most elements on the periodic table are metals. And that I know is a multiple choice question on your test, and I'm always amazed when kids miss it. So most element on, elements on the periodic table are metals, and they are found in groups 1 through 12, some in groups 13 through 16. So hydrogen, of course, is a, not a metal. But groups 1 and 2, groups 3 through 12, you can see the numbers here. There are some metals in group 14 and 15 and 16, but most elements on the periodic table are metals. Elements in the first two columns are very, very reactive, but elements in the D block, which you also sh uh, saw in the Pogel activity, and we'll come back to this. This is the D block here. I think it shows up better here. So here's the D block. These are metals also. Why would they be the D block? Their electron configuration ends in... That, this was in the Pogel activity. You didn't get to this? Not quite. Their electron configuration ends in D, and we'll go through that in more detail next time. And I think we'll stop here. I'm going to mark it right here. I think you guys are a little anxious for your pep rally next period. All right?